Okay, so um, this is hybrid ABM network model, yes. Where I'm using network in the sense of, of um, uh, any logics terminology for process-oriented modeling, discrete event modeling, um, patient flow modeling, as it were. So what you see is here a, um, uh, a little, uh, a little uh, uh, flow flow diagram above, and, and once again, it gives statistics on things, and you can you can kind of click on these to to get statistics. And what you see is people coming in, and here stand a set of healthcare workers to serve them, and when they come in here, a healthcare worker uh, is is seized by them, they're assigned to them, and they treat them. You notice there's two in there, and then um, two have gone down this route, and have apparently been um, uh, whoa! Oh wow! Okay. Um, sorry. Bump up the level. Um, been cured. Um, so uh, one of these routes means that they've been cured. One of these routes means that they're they're not cured. Okay. And and we'll investigate. But what's notable is that we have this um, model down here of agents which are um, uh, developing, contracting, and and being cured from infection. And what you'll notice is that um, once, once they have a procedure um, up above, it'll cure the agents below. So these agents below um, uh, come in and uh, meet with, with docs, and the docs um, uh, cure them. And you'll notice in the background it says, I was cured, I was cured. Um, <laughs> so so <laughs> um, may, maybe this is a little bit too much. Um, uh, too much emphasis on the curative powers of of uh, of the the um, uh, the individuals in the in the healthcare system, but uh, uh, what what we do see is is a situation where fundamentally each entity, as as encoded by these normally anonymous individuals um, queuing up as for graduation commencement. Um, they're associated with these agents down here. Each one is associated with a single agent. And, um, and when they leave the system, the agent remains. And if the agent was not cured, they'll represent for care. Okay? They'll represent quickly for care. Um, and there's a, there's a little relationship here that dictates whether or not they were cured. Um, and um, absent that, they'll, they'll represent quite quickly. Um, in any event, uh, uh, this model does show the interaction, and let me let me just show you the nexus of, of where this comes together. Um, just as 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 any sort of of uh, modeling in uh, in uh, any logic, this is all occurring within the any logic framework. Um, this um, diagram up here was drawn out with the um, the primitives we saw this morning for discrete event modeling. If we click here um, on this this nexus. Um, you'll notice that um, uh, if it's true, with 5% probability that's a treatment failure for entity, otherwise it cures the entity. Um, and so uh, people who go up here uh, with 5% probability, they go up and, and they're, they have a treatment failure. And what do those functions do? Let's, let's go look in main. Um, um, the functions, uh, for example, cure entity, um, how do we tell an entity? Let me ask this. How do we tell an entity that they're cured? Suppose, suppose the, um, the entity is cured, and we want to tell the agent associated with it that they're cured. What, what would be the way that a, that a, that a, um, um, a flow, sort of a, a, a process-oriented flow that might tell, tell an agent that they're cured? What would we do? We send them a message send them a message. And so if you look at the code with this, um, we, uh, we, we say, OK, there's a, there's a person to cure um, called entity.associated person. And then we deliver them a message saying, cure. For those who are in the Java tutorial, um, you'll recognize that I've done something a, a little bit, you could be doing better. Rather than sending, I, I would advise to you for those for whom this is meaningful, those who are in Java tutorial, rather than sending messages that are strings, it's even better to send messages that are, could be nums. Because 
these might be misspelled, it might be misparsed. Um, you might so send cure with a lowercase c. Why not send me num, which is a well-defined thing and it forces you to have only one of several possible messages that you set, the ones that are supported. And then and then you don't have to worry that it, when it's handled, it's looking for lowercase c, and here it's looking for a capital, and all those sort of things. Um, you don't have to worry about the vagaries of that. Instead, it's enforced what the possibility um, uh, uh, what the possible um, things are in that enum. Okay, so, so that was um, a cure. What, how about treatment failure for entity? It sends the entity a message saying treat, treatment failure. Um, and if you go look, uh, sorry, it, it sends the, the person associated with the entity. What's notable here is they have an associated person. The entity has an associated person. Um, and let's go look at person here. Um, and here's a person, and um, I'm not quite sure what moved me to put a GPA in there. That's a great point average, but um, they, they have a cohort group and so on. And if they're infected, um, um, right now, if they receive a cure message, they go back to susceptible. Um, I'm not sure, um, oh, I see, if they, gosh, that's, that's kind of grim. Um, but if they're in fact, <laughs> okay, so this is, this is not the sort of level of quality we're calling for from our healthcare system. <laughs> but if there's a treatment failure right now, <laughs> it has fatal consequ consequences. <laughs> and that, of course, What they do, they do <laughs> cure up for it or um, queue up for it with um, with some enthusiasm, evidently. So um, <coughs> here, um, there's a pretty drastic consequence for treatment failure. But in general, you know, you could have them go to another state where um, either they remain in the infected state or they go to a state where they think they're cured until a symptom reappears and then they go back to infected, right? Um, so, or but they remain infected, just ref, ref, infected, uh, you know, um, unaware of situation or something like that. The point is, um, uh, this is a model which which integrates the two. Let's go spend a moment um, looking. How is it that entities actually keep around an agent? Well, we have an actually a custom class, and for those not in the Java tutorial, um, well, maybe I should put it more positively. Um, uh, in the Java tutorial, we'll be we'll be covering the, the idea behind this. this. This class uses something called subclassing, okay? Um, and that's indicated by this extends. And specifically, it's what's called a subclass of entity. And that means it's a, it's a full-blown entity. It's just a specialized type of entity. And in every, in every way, it satisfies the needs of being an entity. It just does so with further information. And, um, and uh, this, this type of entity, has all the properties and it inherits them. It, it has, it supports and makes use of, and that, that last term is, is critical, it makes use of the normal mechanisms uh, of entity for anything not explicitly declared here. Um, but it extends it with some extra properties. Specifically, it, it can have a person associated with it, you can ask it for an associated person. Um, so you can ask it for the associated person. And that's the agent associated with this entity. So those entities, which I said, are normally faceless. They're normally passive, faceless entities flowing through the system, as Jeff evocatively described them this morning. Those, those entities now have been lent a face. Nay, they have been lent a, a, an actual um, full existence as, a, as an associated person with, a, uh, with an existence that lives beyond the confines of the hospital. That, that, that persists and uh, perhaps even thrives out there in the world. Um, so this is agent entity, and, um, and that's, uh, that's one of the key things that is present in the model. The other thing I'll note here is there's a thing called entity stats, 
which um, can be used to record people's arrival times and people's um, and, and allow you to report the, the arrival times of, of different entities. Um, now, I'm, I'm kind of curious, just uh, having seen this, and I, I don't recall off the top of my head, but it's worth exploring. Um, let's just run this thing for a second. Uh, and, uh, and let's just see, you know, here's, here comes an entity, and I was hoping we might be able to click on it and, and get some information up, but alas, um, uh, they confound our approach. Um, and uh, what we can do is, is click on these things to get further information about, about their, their stats and so on. But um, these entities can carry statistics, and in principle, we could, we could access those statistics. So you could access statistics on how long it took someone to flow through. The natural place to put that would be in the agent. And then the agent could remember their experience in the hospital last time and the quality of care rendered and decide whether to represent or to go to a different facility, et cetera. So um, let, there's one final thing, though, that is, is the, the nexus of, of uh, that another nexus of where they come together. How do you think patients present for care in this model? Under what conditions would someone, so if this is a person, under what conditions would they present for care in a hospital? Putting aside the fact that, the, imagine they have no perception of risk, which, which is currently the case. Where would they present for care in, in this crude representation? Infected, yeah. And so this is the other, the other uh, component. So you'll notice I have this call to get main dot inject agent entity, okay? So this is a call to a, to a method I wrote. And if you go up to inject agent entity function within main, what does that do? Um, well, what it tries to do is, um, if, if, we, if we make this full screen, oh, sorry, um, yeah. If we make this full screen, um, so uh, uh, here, here we, um, we enqueue the, uh, we queue up the agents, um, there's a queue of agents awaiting injection into network, and we put this agent into the queue so that they're known to be waiting. And then, as the final thing, so that we put them into this queue, this sort of waiting list, and up at the source, you'll find that um, arrivals arrive at, when you call a manual inject method, and actually, um, I should, uh, uh, and, and what it will do is when you call inject, okay, sorry folks, I, um, I should have been more careful in showing that. Um, so uh, it is true that, that that's what we do. Um, we, we queue them up there, inject agent entity. Um, but watch this, um, uh, down at the bottom of that function, I, I, I didn't, down the bottom of this method, I didn't point this out, but there's a source.inject. This source, what is this, to what does this refer? Can anyone tell me? What is uh, source, for, to what does source refer? What is source in this model? Yeah, it's actually in that flow diagram. And so what we're doing is we're injecting, we're basically saying to the source, hey, we've got someone ready for injection or into this network. Um, and, but prior to that, we've put them into a queue awaiting it, and this is gonna be the handoff queue. Because what's gonna happen is when we've said inject, we actually can't in any logic, at least not, not in the version I was looking at, I couldn't figure out any way to do it, to directly inject them. So what we do is we tell it, hey, we've, we, we've got someone ready for injection in the network, and over here, um, this, this source gets triggered when it's call, and its injection method gets called, and and when that gets called, it creates a new entity by calling new agent entity. Those are in Java tutorial. What does this new agent entity do? Yeah, creates a new instance of this class. And, and what does this class take as a parameter? It takes a, if you go look at agent entity, when you create a new version of it, this is called a constructor, and it takes a person as a parameter. So going back, to main here um, and looking at that source, what it's really doing is it's creating an agent entity uh, 
with, in passing, the person in this dot poll, Q dot poll, basically removes the person from the queue and returns the uh, reference to that person. So in short, it creates an agent entity with this person who was at the head of the queue and removes them from the queue. So now they're no longer waiting, in, awaiting injection. So, so now they're in the system. And they can flow through with the full flight to MP. But one, no longer baseless. No longer quite so passive in the sense that in their eventual trajectory they can get out and either represent quickly or, or later. Okay? So this is a hybrid model. It's stylized, it's very abstract, but I think you understand the potential power of something like this to knit together the health services framework on the one hand and, and to, to, de, to, to make and those flowing through these health systems models no longer faceless, but to have persistent properties, persistent health conditions, and where the evolution of those health conditions could depend on the um, uh, on the, the the nature of the care rendered. Um, you know, I, I really don't like that thing, though, that they die when inappropriate care is rendered. Because among other things, that sets up a perverse incentive, to say the least. Um, um, and so what I'd suggest doing is, instead of having death here, what I'd suggest, um, um, uh, suggest changing death to is, you know, infected, but... Um, 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 but believed cured or something like that. Um, and, uh, and then we'll have a, um, you folks don't have to do this, but, but I'm going to do it. Um, uh, and, uh, and then I'm going to reconnect these guys and I'm going to have a very quick transition back to, um, to this infected state, maybe with a, um, well, I'll, I'll uh, use the embarrassing um, rate of, of uh, you know, of uh, say say one over uh, uh, say within a week they they'll typically represent something along those lines, um, uh, or say it, maybe they'll discover it within two days. Okay, um, so um, yes. based modeling is, as it were, a process-oriented modeling. I, I personally agree that, um, that, they're, that they uh, can be used in conjunction with each other. What you have to realize is that the, the, people, um, uh, the people practicing them are, um, a by and large, rather distinct set of practitioners historically. Um, and maybe it's time that, you know, we ended up, um, we ended up having a, sort of unified model, just to be able to put them within the same package is an advance, I think. Because, yeah. you know, these communities are operating largely in isolation of each other. Not 100%, not but, you know, I got a winter salmon. Mostly it's discrete event modeling folks there, but then there's some agent-based modelers and some system dynamics models that kind of straggle in and, and, and so on. 
putting them under one roof is a good start. Putting them so you can have them in the same model is an even better start. And I think what you're talking about is actually being realized now, because I understand version 7 of any logic has entities are by nature agents within these. And, and uh, what you're talking about is breaking down that barrier. Even right now, the barrier is not very high. You can see it's, it's very readily done with a few lines of code, which ain't bad, given that if you want to do discrete event modeling and, and agent-based modeling outside of any logic, you're dealing with totally different packages, totally different technologies. This is pretty darn good. But I think version 7 essentially is going to be allowing you to seamlessly integrate them and so on in, in a way that I think could be very, very powerful. I haven't seen it yet myself. Jeff's heard more about it than I have. But um, yes, I agree with you, Blue Sky. It, it's great if you could have agent service, you know, entities as first class agents and stuff like that. Like, why have to define an, an, an entity agent? And I think any logic heard the heard the rumblings. There's a new generation of modelers out there, and they've done like the work necessary to make that happen. So, so I agree. It sounds like they agree. Jeff, do you have any comments on that? Different communities, different, um, and and you know, it's it's already a great advance to draw them together this close. Yeah. Anyway, so 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 um, I've updated that model, and you're welcome to look at it um, look at it in more detail. Um, but very very powerful that that's now under.